Well, it seems like we've been doing this a lot lately, but here we go again. Ladies and gentlemen, Behind the Line proudly presents to you another exciting edition of The Woke! Turning on The Woke! This episode is brought to you by White Privilege. Are you having a difficult time finding employment that pays above minimum wage? Are you constantly being harassed by police after committing felonies? If this is you, find out what White Privilege can do. White Privilege is 100% effective when interacting with law enforcement. White Privilege can also land you a six-figure job with no resume or qualifications required. Right now, we are offering a special where you buy one get one free so you and a friend can enjoy the benefits of white privilege together do not wait give us a call at 888-100-LIES oh the WNBA is learning a valuable lesson that we have been teaching on this channel for years you are not going to learn this valuable lesson sitting in a classroom at woke you listening to the musings of associate professor Jamel Hill not going to learn this lesson in the pews of woke United Methodist listening to the passionate sermons of interim pastor Greg Popovich for some reason this lesson's only taught at Behind the Line University, where the Honorable Casey serves as Dean, Associate Dean, and Lead Professor. Longtime viewers of this channel, you guys know the lesson I'm talking about, so say it with me. There is no loyalty in the woke movement. Doesn't matter how dedicated you are. Doesn't matter if you tithe 10% of your income. In the case of the WNBA, doesn't matter how long you have been a deacon at Woke United Methodist. And speaking of deacons, if you want to become a deacon of the channel, link is in the description below. We have two membership options available. You can become a parishioner for $5 a month. Deacon status is $10 a month. The Discord server for channel members, I'm going to be launching it later this week. We're going to build our own little private community on Discord where you guys can give me ideas for videos or ideas for merch, or just your general thoughts on the channel altogether. So click the link in the description below and join us. Become a member of the channel today. All right, let me ask you something. This past Friday night, what were you doing? Me personally, I was with my friends at happy hour. Maybe you took the wife out to dinner. Perhaps you went to a karaoke bar to sing some of the woke classics. When a man becomes a woman, he gives his cucumber to somebody else. Maybe you took a walk to enjoy the spring weather. There's plenty of ways to spend your time on a Friday night. So let me ask you. How many of you guys spent last Friday night watching the preseason in the WNBA? Anyone? I'm not seeing any hands raised back there. Did anyone spend their time last Friday night watching the WNBA preseason? No one? Well, I mean, that's not all that surprising. Since, you know, this dump can't get people to watch during the regular season. Hell, the WNBA, they have a hard enough time generating interest for the WNBA Finals, also known as the chase for the golden toilet. The most exciting part of the season where the best two dumps in the league battle it out to see who will be given access to the golden toilet in the bathroom with running water during the offseason. For the past two years... The Las Vegas Anonymous Faces, they have been kind of spoiled. Been over 600 days since they last used the porta potties. But when we got home from the bar last Friday night, I noticed an increasing level of fake outrage on Twitter. Lately, the typical fake outrage on social media, it's come from people with multicolored hair, dudes with a five o'clock shadow wearing a dress stuff with extra large socks, screaming at our fearless leader, John Biden, demanding that he stop Israel from decimating Hamas. Friday night, they decided to give John Biden a break as they refocused their fake outrage towards the WNBA. Well, KC, why were the wanker spankers so upset? <laughs> well, a better question would be, when are the wanker spankers not upset? They were upset with the WNBA Friday night because the barely anticipated debut of Angel Reese, it wasn't televised. Not only was it not televised, it wasn't available on social media. It wasn't available through WNBA League Pass, which 
I didn't know existed until this weekend. I didn't think there was enough demand for WNBA League Pass. I mean, they can't get people to watch these games for free. How in the hell are you going to convince people to pay to watch substandard basketball? Anyway, the Spankers, they were upset because they couldn't watch the debut of Angel Reese in the WNBA preseason. First of all, who fucking cares? We're talking about a preseason game. That is the equivalent to getting upset because you can't watch practice. As you guys know, I am a diehard fan of my New Orleans Pelicans, meaning I'm a glutton for punishment. I enjoy wasting my time and money on a franchise that is completely mismanaged, who has poor ownership and is led by one of the worst weasels, I mean, head coaches in the NBA. This season, I watched every single game, all 82 games in the regular season, along with the six games in the playoffs. You know how many preseason games I watched? None. I don't waste my time watching games that don't matter. If you are spending your Friday night clamoring to watch the WNBA preseason and expressing your outrage when it's not available, that is not a WNBA problem. That is a you problem. You are in desperate need of a life. If you're a dude, you're in desperate need of a woman's touch. And I'm not talking about the deflated woman in your closet who remains without air because you can't afford gas for the air compressor. I'm not talking about a woman with more hair on her face than she has on her legs. I'm talking about you needing the touch of a real woman, a woman who is capable of breathing through her lungs instead of needing an air hose. But the good news is, if you were one of the lonely men begging to see the exciting action of the WNBA preseason, Kat Engelbert, she had you covered. The diva of Dump Divas, she knew dozens of people were excited about the start of the preseason. If you're willing to pay $13 a month or $35 for the entire season, you had exclusive access to the debut of Caitlin Clark through WNBA League Pass. I mean, that's great, right? For the small fee of $35, which thanks to the Biden economy, $35 now feeds a family of four a midnight snack. For the small price of $35, you could watch the debut of Caitlin Clark in the dump. Now you would think, you would think lonely men would be happy about it. You would think lonely men would be satisfied, but no, 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 no. According to the woke on social media, the WNBA preseason being available on television, that was not a sign of progress. Instead, this is racist. This is white privilege. How dare they show the debut of Caitlin Clark while refusing to show the debut of Angel Reese? How much more racist could the WNBA be? Excuse me? Come again? Let me get this straight. The league that ranks number one in the fight against mythical racism. You expect me to believe that league is racist? It took me all of five seconds to figure out why the WNBA broadcast the debut of Caitlin Clark over Angel Reese. If the lonely men on social media took a break from peeling the skin off the cucumber, they could have done the same thing. But as you guys know, they never let those pesky facts get in the way of pushing the narrative. Let me show you something. This right here. This is the crowd for the WNBA debut of Angel Reese. As you can see, there are more employees in the building than actual paying customers. This is your typical crowd in the WNBA. The empty seats double, sometimes triple the seats filled with boodles. Now, check out this picture. This is the crowd in Dallas for Caitlin Clark's debut against the Dallas Wankers. Now, to be completely fair, Angel Reese debuted in an actual NBA arena. Caitlin Clark debuted in a high school gym. Now, it wasn't a sellout, but there are far more boodles in the seats. Is it really that hard to understand? Is it really that hard to understand why the WNBA would prioritize Caitlin Clark over Angel Reese? Angel Reese is a star. Caitlin Clark 
is a draw. There's a huge difference, huge difference between the two. Some on social media, they were calling for Kathy Engelbert to be fired. Whiteness got y'all in a chokehold. The WNBA is 80% black. Why aren't we featuring Angel Reese? Hm. Great question. Here's a better question. Why aren't you spending your own money to go watch Angel Reese play? But KC, Angel Reese has over 6 million followers on social media. That's great. Woohoo! Yes, yes, yes. Good for Angel Reese. How come she couldn't convince 60 of those 6 million followers to part with their hard-earned money to watch her play? The answer is simple. Angel Reese is a star. Caitlin Clark is a draw. As it turns out, it wasn't even the WNBA's decision to not broadcast the debut of Angel Reese. I promise you, though, if they were given the choice between broadcasting Caitlin Clark or Angel Reese... They are choosing Caitlin Clark 100% of the time. Hell, they've already chosen Caitlin Clark. Out of 40 games in the regular season, Katie Rue Clark, 36 games on national TV. But the decision Friday night not to broadcast the debut of Angel Reese, that decision was not made by the WNBA. It was made by Bally Sports. Instead of broadcasting the debut of Angel Reese, Bally Sports, they decided to go with Major League Baseball. What does that tell you? Networks have one goal, draw an audience, the biggest audience possible. Even poorly run networks like Bally Sports, their only goal is to draw an audience. So what does that tell you? Bally Sports thought they would draw a larger audience with Major League Baseball, a sport that generates far less interest in the national media than the WNBA. Angel Reese might be a star, but Bally Sports they don't think she's a bigger draw than Major League Baseball. This was a business decision. It had nothing to do with mythical racism. It had nothing to do with white privilege. You know, it's going to be a very interesting season in the WNBA. Now that interest, it will have absolutely nothing to do with basketball. Kaylin Clark's a great player, but the basketball in the WNBA... I mean, let's just be real here. The basketball in the WNBA, it sucks. Social media, the mainstream media though, I got this feeling that they are going to use the WNBA to fabricate racial tension. If Caitlin Clark succeeds, if Caitlin Clark elevates the dump and draws millions of viewers to their substandard product, the media, they will claim it's because of white privilege. If Angel Reese fails to draw, if Angel Reese isn't prominently featured on national television, the WNBA, they will be accused of mythical racism. <laughs> but give me your thoughts on this. The Spankers accused the WNBA of racism because they offered the debut of Caitlin Clark without offering the debut of Angel Reese. Is this going to get worse as we get into the regular season? Do you think the WNBA will be used to push racial tension and racial division? Let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share the video. Appreciate your support. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. And I'll see you guys later.